the story that they told was that when they adopted her in Florida, they uh, went out for a day at Disney World. You know, the whole family went out for a day at Disney World and they took Natalia back Sorry. to the hotel with the whole family. All-star sports, most likely. Yeah, yeah. probably. That's a good one for the kids. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. they took Natalia back and the whole family back to the hotel room. You know, Christine... Uh, like undresses her to give her a bath as you would for a six year old kid, mm -hmm. and Michael Michael hears a scream from the bathroom, and and Christine, oh, oh, oh. And, and Christine says, "Get in here!" And as Michael puts it, I went into the room. I just and I that. I went to the room and I looked out and I saw that she had PB oh. care. There was for certain. Pubic hair. This is the motion. It's the. It's the. It's the uh, I do. They're, they're, I've been working on my Michael. I've been trying to figure out how to play Michael. He's a difficult. He's such. A, he's a very distinctive. It's, it's so hard without yeah. you seeing me because it's all the like the him smashing his face, and him like rolling and writhing yeah. and stuff, and then being like, no, 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 no. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. Yeah, it's he's very a history. coward who was also a bad man. Yeah, like. yeah. No, yes. no. He's an absolute coward because he claims that in all of this he is victim to. He claims that he was a he was fully passive and fully submissive, and that he was under the spell of Christine, just like everybody else in the family was, and he could never break free from Christine. Well, he he ramped. He closed up his story. From the first time he was talking, the first interview he did, he said everything. Yeah. He said all of the stuff that he was directly involved in, and it wasn't until later, probably after season one came in, and someone probably sent him a cease and desist from Christine, and he uh, probably had to stop talking. We well, kept stuff. calling her evil in the second season. I mean, she is. Well, that's that's his very dramatic nickname for her. He's like, I don't call her Christine. Her name is not Christine. I call her evil. Her name is yeah. evil. And, and when evil tells you something... Evil is going to get something. You know, I uh, discovered an interesting little anecdote about Christine and Michael. I discovered it on uh, on Reddit. I wanted the Natalia Gray subreddit where the people are very passionate. There was one person who claimed that they worked for Christine at her daycare. Sure, uh, because way back because Christine actually did run a daycare out yeah. of her house for many years. Yes, uh, and this person claimed that. Um, this daycare was also somewhat abusive, and it was very bizarre. This person claimed that Christine's style of childcare is that they would take toddlers, zip them up into like these little sleeping bags, these little cocoons, and put them in high chairs. This person called it baby jail. And basically these kids would just sit there in these little cocoons for hours on end right up until 5 p.m. when the parents would come to pick them up. Then they would unzip the children, let them out, and then the parents would be none the wiser. Yes. Uh, and what she said about Michael, this person who worked at the daycare, is that Michael would basically go up to his room. He'd kind of have his room and he'd only come out every once in a while for to like get some food. He would barely talk to Christine. Anytime he talked to Christine, it would be to complain about something. And then he, they said that he looked very disheveled all the time and that he would just hide from Christine basically all day long. But it makes sense. And it, again, it tracks. I think that he was abused in the scenario, but he has a lot of, uh, he was a part of it. Entirely. God, for yes. sure. He was number two. God, uh, yes. he admits that he saw her beat him. Yes. Three times. Multiple he times. Multiple yeah. Times. yeah. And he didn't also, do did he ever have a job? I kept trying to clock that. Like, what was his employment situation? A fun guy. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think he was ever at any point. Yeah, he, held down a job. He had a job. I can't remember what it was. Here we go. What did Natalia Grace's from do for a living based on Michael Barnett's career? This is actually interesting. I think he was a real estate guy. Retail jobs. Okay. Um, he was a team leader role to district manager roles for companies such as Circuit City and T-Mobile. He is absolutely a Circuit City manager. Yes, <laughs> he is. Oh, wow. We know I how just, good they did. Wow. <laughs> I, I, that just came all the way back. That He is definitely a manager at a retail company. Yeah. Um, he, he works as district director of operations for a financial company in Indiana. So I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. He, does, he does staffing and stuff. Um, but yes, I could totally see him be a manager. <laughs> Absolutely. But, he, you know... So back to the, the so the, the, coming back to the circling the, re back. the circling back to the reaging thing. So they find a doctor uh, that is able to say is willing to say like this is yes I believe that this is an adult. And so they go to this judge, and this is what so is a, a judge named 
Gerald Zor. Ah. Uh, and behold, Zor. <laughs> Judge Zor. Uh, and this judge didn't see Natalia, didn't bring Natalia in. He didn't meet anyone. He didn't even meet the Barnetts. They never even stepped into court. They, the Barnetts didn't take an oath to tell the truth. The Barnetts just submitted a petition with this doctor's note saying, like, this is an adult. And the judge said, okay, and just re-aged her from 18 8 to 22. And if you want to if you want to ask the, the question to so many things in this fucking case, when you ask, like, how did this happen? The answer is always Indiana. Yeah. This yeah. state almost fucking murdered me. It is. It is <laughs> really weird. A man. bad. It's a ba as far as the government goes in Indiana. It's fucking god awful. Well, this yeah. is just a, you know, you uh, Obviously, there are tons of different people within these governmental systems, people that are better and worse at their jobs. This is just such an example of I, I feel like the only way I really put it is it feels like some kind of negligent laziness. Yes. Where no one really looked into this case. This all came about. Uh, I don't really know how they got to change somebody's age without their consent, unless they got her to sign the form. Maybe there's something in there. I don't know how that. Fucking but if works. you're an eight year old, I don't. You, you don't, can't pay, sign paperwork. But that's what they did. That's yeah. what they did. They basically got her to admit somebody. They, they fuck. They just fucked her up. It really they does seem. You could convince a child to say anything. And well, now, when she's legally an adult, they could do anything they want to her. Yeah, after yes. she's 22. I mean, it really does seem like the judge, like the paperwork came across his desk. He read through it. He went, that's weird. Yeah, crazy. And he just signed it and handed it off. And so all of a sudden, in the with the stroke of a pen, her birth date changed from 2003 to 1989. And if that's not magic, I don't know what is. Like legitimately. Like this idea of now we all have collectively agreed that you're a, you're an adult now. Perception. I mean, the, yeah. So now the perception is like this person does like suddenly like this nine year old could go in and buy a case of beer. She yeah. Could, yeah she Fucking could go. cool ass nine year old. <laughs> uh, but it's difficult because yeah, she it, can vote, you know, it, all yeah. this shit like instantly. So now they don't know what to do with Natalia Grace. So now they got her. They 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 have one in this aspect. This was Christine Barnett wanted because they've been trying to get her out. They couldn't figure out a way to do it without them being on the hook. So because because Christine Barnett did not want things to come back to her for getting rid of this child, even though like it would have been an magic higher, mom. It utterly yeah. it would have been utterly understandable. And and actually, probably more people would have applauded you if you had come out mean like this is actually past my abilities. I'm going to admit that we want to put her in a place where she can be taken care of and watch over by people who know what they're doing. You would have been a fucking hero. Yeah. She decided that she thought that people would then think that she, I guess, think that she was bad at it. Well, they would think they would. They, she was it speculated that she was afraid that people would think she was a bad person by saying that I can't take care of it because, you know, that she doesn't have what it takes. Uh, and, yeah, it would be a black mark on her record. It would basically be just make her reputation, her her Q score yeah. lower. Lower. Yeah. And then now. So now but now that they have reaged her, they can kind of do whatever they want. Hmm. So they move her to an apartment. They literally just drop her off at a place in an extremely bad neighborhood in the state of Indiana where it's like you're just basically watching a child who has to kind of figure it out. And the one thing I'll say about a Natalia disabled Grace, child. Yeah, disabled, disabled child, I know Natalia Grace, I'll say something, man. She fucking bowed up. Yeah. She oh, like, yeah. The fact <laughs> that she figured out how to make it. Like, literally, how to survive well, is crazy. It is. But the first neighborhood wasn't that bad. It's the, all the, bad. The, it's the, not the, good. It, like, wasn't, it wasn't beautiful. It wasn't beautiful. But it wasn't. The first neighborhood wasn't all that bad. It was like one of those apartment complexes where it's a bunch of, like, f uh, single-story apartments. You know, maybe, like, four or five people live in there. And so she's nine years old. She's just dropped into an apartment. And so she just starts going to other people's houses and just knocking on doors saying, Hey, can I come in? Can I have food? Can we hang out? Yeah. Like, can I, I need stuff. And yeah. she's, and she's been, and as you said, Eddie, like, you know, a kid will say, do whatever you tell him to do. She's been told over and over and over and over again by Christine, you're 22, you're 22. And Michael as well yes. has also been telling her you're 22, you're 22. This so, is how a 22 year old acts. This is what a 22 year old says. This is what you say when you're asked these questions. She coached her. Yeah. She was absolutely coached. Yes. And, and so she starts just walking into people's houses. But it's interesting because now you're legally an adult. So up to this point, she has been kind of accused of doing these kind of like fucked up 
kid things. Yeah. Accused of f- fucking with the neighbor's kids. Accused of fucking with her, bro- her stepbrothers. Or accused of attacking people at school. And that's one thing when you're a kid. But now you're, quote unquote, an adult. So everything that you do now has to be looked at like you're an adult. She was playing with a local kid. People came and saw her rolling around the grass with this, local, this other kid. They've been told... That all of the people that have met Natalia Grace have been told that that's a 22 year old woman that mm-hmm. it just looks like a little kid. So you watch them, these two kids playing together, like in a field. Yeah. What would you do if a strange 22 year old person that looked like a kid that wasn't a kid but was like playing kind of not intimately but literally like tickling and rolling around with another kid that age? Well, it's something that would be inappropriate for a 22 year old person to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is what I'm saying. They said she was unbuckling his pants. Yes. Yeah. She's doing because now again it's coming from the view of being, oh, we're viewing this as a 22-year-old doing these things. Where it's like, no, it was a fellow nine-year-old that was doing stuff that was just literally like playing with another child and trying to fuck, having some kind of social network. Well, I mean, not only that, but you know, the unbuckling of the pants, all this points towards the child being sexually abused because she also made- If that's even real. Yeah, if that if that's even real, but I don't know. I mean, she made a lot. She made a lot of sexually inappropriate comments to her neighbors. A lot of sexually inappropriate jokes. Yeah, uh, she did spend a brief period in a, a, what they called a stress center, which was it was a fucking asylum. Yeah, like, it was the an pictures in, they showed of it. It did not look friendly. Looks terrible. Like yes. Shutter Island. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it did. bad. Yeah, but it was also said that she was, you know, a approaching sexual inappropriateness with some of the other patients and then she was taking out she was taken out of that center because of that but that's the thing is that that's what that's the behavior exactly the behavior that abused kids exhibit yes. a lot of ki- abused kids exhibit uh preco- they call it precocious sexuality yeah. uh and it's almost proof that at some point either before she came to the barnets or while she was with the barnets she experienced some sort of sexual abuse at yeah. some point in her life. Almost certainly. This Can is I frown ask? time. All of this is frowny. Yeah, things. it's a very, and it's even frownier for the fucking documentary filmmakers to exploit all of that for yeah. six episodes. Yes. I have some questions about the insane asylum that just don't add up to me. No, there's as a, far as the documentary. Goes. I, you know, well, no, they, there's a lot. Of, they left a lot of gaps. Yeah. They left a lot of gaps. They were in and out of that shit in the first season and then don't mention it in the second. Yeah. Because, like, first of all, all the phone calls from the nurses and shit, uh, none of those people left their name. They're just random phone calls. They could have been literally anybody that they're talking to, and we have to take their word for it, Mm -hmm. that they're actually talking to the nurses that work there. But I know that no nurse from, like, a fucking nursing home would even talk like that. No. No. You know, it's just like, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. I, it doesn't. It doesn't add up. No, it do, it doesn't add up at all. It's, so it may even be that all that was bullshit. Who knows? Who knows? This is the yeah. thing in this story because you can't even trust the filmmakers in this fucking thing. Everybody's no. all over the place, and everybody's got a fucking agenda. Natalia Grace is just really just trying to tell her story, but also I think that her memory is kind of jacked up because of all the things that happened to her. I also think that she's been through a fucking lot. I think that there's all and it was traumatized deeply as a kid, and now you've got Michael. Barnett, who is a legitimate, I don't know what you'd call him. You know, like he's a a, narcissist. Yeah. And I would not let him fucking watch Wendy or (laughs) Carmi. (laughs) 